Welcome to today's lesson on addition using commutative, associative, and zero properties. Today I'm going to teach you how to add numbers using these three properties. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and begin our lesson today adding using the commutative property. Now the commutative property tells us that it doesn't matter the order of the numbers you're adding, you'll still get the same sum at the end. So let's go ahead and start with this group of rocks right here. As you can see, we have four yellow rocks and we have three gray rocks. So we're going to use the variables A for the yellow rocks and B for the green rocks. Now remember, a variable is a letter that you use to replace a number in a formula. So if we were to add these together, we would have a group of seven rocks. Now, the commutative property tells us that if we add yellow rocks plus gray rocks, it's going to be the same amount as adding our gray rocks and then our yellow rocks. So, as you can see, we still have three gray rocks, and we're going to display that as B, because we used B for the gray rocks over here. And we're going to add that to A, the yellow rocks that we have on our side over here. And as you can see, we did not change the number of rocks that we had. We only changed the order of the rocks and the order of our numbers. So according to the commutative property, 4 plus 3 has the same value as 3 plus 4. And we can write that in a formula by saying a plus b is equal to the value of b plus a. Let's go ahead and practice our addition using the associative property. Now the associative property is similar to the commutative property. The associative property is about grouping numbers together. So let's go ahead and start by looking at these three rock collections below. Now we're going to label our first rock collection A. And in rock collection A, we have seven rocks. We're going to label our second rock collection B. Rock Collection B has 15 rocks. And lastly, we have Rock Collection C. Rock Collection C has five rocks. Let's go ahead and start by grouping together this pile of yellow rocks with this pile of gray rocks. So we're going to have one big pile of rocks together here. So we're going to write that as seven plus 15 in parentheses to show it's going to be in one pile, plus our five rocks that are going to be on the side in a separate pile. Now the associative property says that this has an equal value whether we group these rocks together in one pile or whether we group them together in a different pile. So let's go ahead and see what our parentheses would look like if instead of grouping piles A and B, if we grouped piles B and C. So now we group all of the gray rocks together and we have a pile of yellow rocks on the side. So we would write this as seven by itself because our seven rocks are by themselves plus, and then in parentheses, 15 plus five. And that's gonna tell us how many gray rocks we have all together. So the associative property tells us that when we're adding numbers, it doesn't matter how you group them, you will still have the same sum at the end. Now if we were to write out the full formula using the variables above, we would say that a plus b plus c is equal to the value of a plus, in parentheses, b plus c. Let's take a moment to discuss the property of zero in addition. Whenever you're adding a number to zero, the number is gonna have the same value as it did before. Let's go ahead and look at this using variables. Let's use the variable a. a can represent any number or set of numbers that you're going to be adding to zero. So a plus zero will have a sum of a. So we're saying if we add any value to the number zero, the value is going to stay the same. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at this using the bookshelves above. 
As you can see, we have a bookshelf here that's very full. We have 89 books on this bookshelf. We have zero books on this bookshelf. So how many books do we have in all? Well, if we use our property of zero, we know that this value is going to stay the same when we're adding it to the number zero. So 89 plus zero equals 89. Let's go ahead and practice what you've learned today. Let's go ahead and start with this equation. 85 plus 77 is equal to, I want you to use the commutative property to finish this equation. Well remember, a plus b is equal to b plus a. So 85 plus 77 has an equal value to 77 plus 85. Let's go ahead and try another problem together. This time, I want you to use the associative property. You're going to finish the second half of this equation. If we have 79 plus 28 plus 37, how can you finish this equation using the associative property? Well, if we have a plus b plus c is equal to a in a group on its own plus, in parentheses, b plus c, we have finished our equation. Great job! Let's go ahead and try our last problem practicing our property of zero in addition. If you are going to add 919 plus 834 plus zero, what sum would you get? Well, if we were to add these numbers together, 119 plus 834, 9 plus 4 is 13, we carry our 1, 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and 9 plus 8 is 17. And 0, we don't have to add anything because it has a value of 0, so that means we have a sum of 1,753. Great job! Let's go ahead and review what we've learned in today's lesson. First, we learned that the commutative property, it doesn't matter the order of the numbers you're adding, they will still have the same sum. So we learned that a plus b has an equal value to b plus a. We then learned in the associative property that if you're adding numbers, you can put them into different groups and still get the same sum. So we learned that you could have a group a plus b plus c and that would have the same value as a by itself plus a group of b plus c. Lastly, let's discuss the property of zero. The property of zero states that when you're adding a number or a set of numbers to a value of zero, your sum will have the value of the numbers or the set of numbers that you are adding.